Hello, it's me again. I'm back for another little repair pile video. This one's a, a, a special one. This machine here is the silver label Commodore 64 that you saw at the beginning of the repair pile videos where when I went through all of the machines that I had at that time, what happened was I, it was very, very cold in here. And um, we do strange things when we're cold. And I decided just to have a little look <laughs> inside this one. So I opened it up uh, and then I kind of went through and I did the whole of the thing without actually recording anything. So I'm just gonna show you the process that I went through for this one so that you got you, you don't have to put up with all of the messing around and the dead ends that I went down and scoping and stuff because it was quite a simple thing. So anyway, this is a silver label C64. I wonder if it's got... The serial number on the bottom is 19750. Uh, let's take the case off. And by the way, the uh, the case clips on this are all intact. Even though this case is horribly yellowed, browned, all of the case clips are in good condition. There is a bit of stress marks on the um, on the actual pieces of plastic, but they look sound. So I'm being really careful with that one. It's obviously still got its RF shield in, and I'm not taking that out because this is a silver label. This one is all about completeness. Probably um, when the new owner gets it, they'll, they might want to give it a clean up. Uh, I've already taken the RF shield out, which is here. It's got a SID chip, chip on it, but that's not the SID chip that's from this machine. This one is actually missing. Um, so what Paul's asked me to do is go through all of the... I've got about 10 Commodore 64s under repair here and find an early one to put in here to, to match things. And you'll see I have to do that quite a bit. So I've already taken the RF shield off, I've bent them. And um, this is what we get on the output. Absolutely nothing. You can see that the, uh, the power is on because the diagnostic cart is, uh, is already running. And the first thing I did was check all the voltages and I was getting some weird voltages from um, the 12 volt regulator. And the fuse looked a bit funky, so and and had some high resistance. I don't know what was going on with that, but I changed the fuse and it went away. So, um, but I tested this fuse after I took it out, and it had actually just blown. So anyway, that's the fuse was right. The the voltages were then all present and correct. The five the five volt um, regulators here that was correct. The twelve volts here, the um, the voltages on the edge connector are correct. So it all looked good. The voltages on uh, on the Vic two and in the SID socket were correct. So I was happy to proceed. I'm still getting the black screen. So I took the VIC-2 out and tested it in my test machine and it's completely dead. So that's the first thing that you need to change. And all of these are actually the chips that uh, were originally in here. Oh yeah, the, uh, the serial number in here is uh, 2749. So I don't know why that's different to the outside one. Okay, so I found a, uh, another ceramic package, uh, VIC-2. This one is 35th week of 1983, and this one is the first week of 1983. So it's later in the year, but it's still in the same year. I will have a look. If there's a closer match than this, I will swap them over. And this is an R3, actually. So this is a better, this is a better VIC-2. <laughs> but whether you want the earlier one, I don't know. So now, what do we get? So I switch it on now. We get black screen. So we've got that line on the side of the screen showing us that we've got a picture, but there's still no, there's still no output. So, so obviously the first thing I thought of was it's the PLA. So I took the PLA out and I tested that in my machine. And this is a different, I have not seen one like this before, made in Singapore. It's not got a brand on, it just says 64, C64A and uh, 93459 PC. F8240, so obviously um, late 82, which is a, a nice early PLA. Uh, but this must be one of the first batch of them, and it works fine, which is really nice. That's good. Uh, I've not taken the um, CPU out of its socket. Okay, so now all of the CIAs and the ROMs are in sockets. So the next thing I decided to do with the with Dead Test Max enabled on the on the test cartridge is to start popping chips out to see if any of these were um, crashing the system before that could run. So let's take a CIA out. 
And with that CIA out, we get a display. Let's let that run. And that's passed. Let's try dead test. And with dead test, it actually flashes an error code. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and it's consistent. What I did next was I wanted to eliminate again these rather than starting to pull out um, memory chips. These aren't MT RAM, they should be fine. I don't really want to work on this, I don't want to desolder anything unless I really have to. So, best thing to do is eliminate the, uh, the, the easy stuff first. So, I started pulling out ROM chips. I did pull out this one first, and that was okay. I pulled out this one next, and that was okay. And then I pulled out this one. And I'll be sending this one to you, Matt, because I think you'll be interested in it. Right, so with that out, so we know that that works. But what about dead test? So I've just turned it on and we've got black screen, which means that dead test is actually running. It's not flashing an error code. We have to wait for it to get to the next stage and it's, and it's gonna pass these tests. I'll let it do that. There we go. It's doing the sound test now, but um, we'll let it loop. So it's, it says count one. Everything that's attached to this board, as far as dead test can see, is working. So the next stage is to replace the chips that are faulty. Um, so I've got here a matching ROM, almost matching. It's uh, 1983, 15th week. It's actually earlier than these ones. This is an 25th week of 83. So this one's slightly earlier. And a CIA, let's go in here. I have sprayed contact cleaner in uh, all of the sockets that I've messed around with. And then we'll put it on the normal diagnostics and run that. Right, so you can see there, there's a timer, timer 1B is bad, which relates to the CIAs. And I know that this CIA is good, and this is an original one, so let's try popping that one out. And replacing it with a matching one. These are um, ninth week of 1983, so they're nice and early. Period correct. And I'm gonna put this on no RAM, we know that the RAM passed on the last pass so oh and I'm also going to put a SID in and this is a again a ninth week of 1983 so we're on no RAM check so it'll just skip past everything and the timers are good Right, so we've got CIA timers all working at the bottom there and a full pass on the diagnostics. So this is a complete working machine now. It's got uh, all of the nice matching chips in. It's got this lovely original PLA, um, 1982 6510 CPU. Uh, there's a lot of chips in here that are from 1982. All of the RAM is from 1982. Um, the, most of the ones that I've replaced are from 1983, but there are chips in here from 1983. So I think it's, you know, for instance, the, um, the ROMs are from the, the second half of 83. So uh, these all do match. And it's a nice, it's a nice machine. It's, it's sound. Right, I suppose the last thing to test, now I've put that back together, is, um, is the keyboard. Being very careful with the case clips. That's a Densham Computers Limited from Dorset. Let's see if the keyboard works. Now oh, the keyboard is perfect. Absolutely perfect keyboard. 
There's no, you don't have to press hard on any of the buttons, uh, the keys to make them work. We've got a working LED. So this one is 100% fixed. Anyway, look, there it is. It's all back together. Case clips intact, screw posts intact. And yeah, a really nice machine. Although horribly browned. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't recommend retro bright in this one. I think that this would probably, I mean, it's got some different patches on it. And I think that, that it would, it might look worse if you try to retro bright this one. So let, let this one have its patina. Oh, while I'm here, this is the machine I took all of the, uh, the chips out of. So this one is now a parts machine, which is a bit of a shame. This is number three, by the way. So if you think back to that one, but it's, this is, the case on this one is in a bad state. It's got broken case, uh, case post there. All of the case clips have gone. So I'm, I'm not sorry that I haven't got to um, fix this one up, um, but I'll concentrate on all the ones with good cases first, and then um, I'll put together all of the other cases and see if I can make complete machines out of what's left and then whatever's left out of that is spares okay so that's it for this one i'm probably going to keep these down to uh, single machine episodes from now on where i can just grab a little bit of time and record something on a machine hopefully get it repaired if they're really simple i'll probably chuck in two machines at once but i have got some more spectrums to do so i might switch to a spectrum because we've been doing a few commodore 64s uh, i've got a couple more 48ks to have a look at here my, maybe even more than that. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see what happens in the next episode and I'll see you in that one.